If you have been following this channel, you are probably familiar with this website already. A few months back, we explored the landing page reveal animation and this eye-catching text over effect from this same site. But there is still plenty of impressive elements we haven't covered yet. Take a look at this stunning page transition animation. The way the current page holds its position while the new page glides into view really looks cool, creating an eye-catching layered effect. Based on the response to my previous page transition videos, I can tell many of you are using Next.js to build your websites and these are some of your favorite content pieces. This particular effect has been on my to-do list for a while now, so the timing felt perfect to break it down for you today. After experimenting for several hours to reverse engineer this animation, I came up with my own implementation using a combination of clip paths and CSS transforms. While my version might not be quite as polished as the original, the process was really a great learning experience, realizing what's possible when you leverage key CSS properties effectively. In this video, I'll walk you through creating these smooth page transitions in Next.js with few transitions and GSAP. If you find my work helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, if you want to access the source code for this project plus hundreds of other similar micro projects along with a complete website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive in. I've got a fresh Next.js project running locally to save us time. Let's start by cleaning up the default code to get a clean workspace. I'll open global CSS file first and delete all the default styles. I'll do the same with page module CSS file, just removing everything. Now for the home page component, I'll clear out all the starter code from the main file and start building our home page structure. I'll create a div with the class home and add a header inside. The header will have an h1 with some sample text. Next, I'll add a hero image using a native HTML image tag. Since we are working with images, let's also add the images for this project. I'll go to the public folder and drop in the image files we need. There we go, our home page is all set up. It's time to add more pages now. Inside the app directory, I'll create a new folder called work and add a file named page.jsx. This will be a simple functional component. Just like the home page, I'll create a div with the class name work and add an h1 inside. To create a project list layout, I'll add a container called projects and place four images inside it. The actual page content doesn't matter much since it's independent from the transition effect. I just want to make sure the page doesn't look empty. That's our work page done. Let's create another page called studio. I'll follow the same steps. Inside the app directory, I'll create a new folder called studio and add a file named page.jsx. This will be also a simple functional component. Just like the other pages, I'll create a div with the class name studio. For this page, I'll divide the layout into two columns. The first column will simply have an h2 with some text. The second column will also have placeholder text using an h2 element. To make this page look a bit different, I'll also add an image inside the second column. That's it for the studio page. Next, let's create a new folder called contact and add a page.jsx file. The contact page will also have a similar layout to the studio page. We'll split it into two columns. The first column will contain an h2 heading. In the second column, we'll add some placeholder text inside a div with the class contact copy. I'll also add some dummy text style to look like social links. That completes our contact page. Now you can see all our pages are ready and can be accessed through their appropriate routes. Let's move on to setting up the navigation. I'll create a new folder called components inside the source directory. Inside this folder, I'll add a new file called nav.jsx. First, I'll import the link component from Next.js. This will also be a simple functional component called nav. For this structure, I'll create a main div with the class nav. Inside this, I'll add two columns using divs with the class column. The first column will contain our logo. I'll create a div with the class nav logo and add a link that points to the home page. In the second column, I'll add the navigation items and some dummy text. The nav items will hold all our page links. Each navigation item gets its own div with the class nav item. Inside each nav item, I'll add a link component that points to the appropriate page. Our first link will go to the work page. The second link will go to the studio page and the third will go to the contact page. Below the navigation items, I'll add some dummy copy with the class of nav copy just to match the look of the original website. There we go, our navigation is ready to be used across all pages. 
Now let's actually add the navigation to our pages. I'll go to the layout.js file and import our nav component at the top. I'll add it inside the body tag so it gets rendered on all pages. There we have it. We now have all our pages with the navbar fully functional. Let's get to styling now. Let's quickly handle the styling now. I'll add some basic CSS to give our site a clean look. I am not going to dwell on this part too much since it's not related to our page transitions. Starting with the color variables, I am setting up a simple light theme with a white background and dark text. Next comes our reset styles, zeroing out margins and padding and using border box sizing for more predictable layouts. For typography, I am using a custom font throughout the site with different sizes for headings and text. Our H1 gets a large font size with some negative letter spacing for that modern look. The H2s are smaller but still maintain that same design language. Text elements like links and paragraphs share same styling, no underlines, dark color and slightly bold weight. For the navigation, I am fixing it to the top of the viewport with full width. I have split the nav into two columns using flexbox. The first takes up one third of the space and the second takes two thirds. Each page gets its own specific layout. The home page fills the viewport with the main heading positioned near the top center. I am making the hero image quite large and centering it at the bottom of the screen. The work page gets a centered layout with projects stacked in a column at 32% width. For studio and contact pages, I am using a two column layout where the left column is narrower than the right. Both maintain consistent padding and spacing between elements. Finally, I have added some utility classes for the text animations. These will work with GSAP's split text plugin, but you can skip this part as the video will be only covering the page transitions. With our styling done, the site now has a clean, minimal aesthetic that will showcase our transitions nicely. Now let's create the key element for our transition effect. If you watched the demo closely, you noticed how each transition begins with a dark overlay that reveals the new page content. To achieve this effect, I have come up with a simple solution, a div element that we will animate using scale transforms. We'll call this element our reveler. Let me add the CSS for this element now. I am positioning it fixed on the screen, starting from the top left corner. It needs to cover the entire viewport, so I'm setting both width and height to full screen dimensions. The transform origin is set to center top. This is crucial because it determines how our scaling animation will behave. For the color, I am using our foreground variable, which is nearly black. I have set pointer events to none. And finally, a z index of 2 ensures it sits above our content. Now we need to add this regular element to each of our pages. When a new page mounts, this overlay will initially be visible, creating that covered state. Then we'll animate it using GSAP to create our smooth transition effect. This simple div is actually the secret behind the entire transition. Just shows how powerful CSS transforms can be when combined with good animation timing. Now we need to animate our reveler element when a new page loads. We could create a GSAP animation directly on each page, but that would mean repeating the same code multiple times. Instead, let's create a custom hook that encapsulates this animation logic. We'll call it use reveler. This approach will make our code much cleaner and easier to maintain. If you want to change the animation later, we only need to update it in one place. Let's start by adding the use client directive at the top of our file. This directive is necessary because we are using browser APIs through GSAP. It tells Next.js that this code should only run on the client side, not during the server side rendering. So you would need to define this directive otherwise it will throw errors. Next, I'll import the tools we need from GSAP. The use GSAP hook for React integration, the main GSAP object and custom ease for more control over our animation timing. Now I need to register the custom ease plugin with GSAP so we can use it. I am also creating a custom easing curve called Hop with a cubic bezier curve. This creates that smooth, elegant motion that gives our transition that polished feel. Now for our actual hook function, use reveler. 
Inside, I am using the use gcf hook which automatically sets up and cleans up gcf animations. The animation itself is simple. We are targeting the reveler class and animating its scale y property from 1 down to 0. This creates the effect of the dark overlay retracting upward. I have set the duration to 1.25 seconds for a smooth feel and added a delay of 1 second to accommodate the clip path and scale animations we'll cover next. Finally, I am using our custom hop easing for the distinctive motion. Now we just need to go to each of our page components, import this hook and call it. When each page loads, the reveler will automatically animate out toward the top, revealing our page content, initiating the transition effect. Now let's create the key part of the transition, the part where the new page content reveals itself. First, we need to install a library called NextViewTransitions. This library makes it easier to implement ViewTransitions API with Next.js app router. Once it's installed, let's update our nav component. We'll start by adding the use client directive at the top since we are using browser APIs. Next, I'll import two key hooks, use transition router from NextViewTransitions and use path name from Next.js. The use transition router hook will give us control over page transitions and use path name will tell us which page we are currently on. This is important because we don't want to trigger transitions when clicking on the current pages link. Inside our nav component, I'll initialize these hooks. I'm creating a router object with use transition router and getting the current path name with use path name hook. Now let's create a function called trigger page transition. This is where the magic happens. I'm using the web animations API to animate the document's root element. The animation uses clip path to create that expanding rectangle effect. We start with a thin horizontal line below the middle of the screen. That's what this clip path creates. Then we animate to a full screen rectangle. The animation runs for 2 seconds. I'm using a custom cubic bezier curve, same as the custom ease property we created. The key part is the pseudo element property set to view transitions new root. This tells the browser to apply this animation to the new page as it transitions in. Next, I'll create a handle navigation function that manages our link clicks. It takes a path parameter and returns an event handler function. First, it checks if we are clicking a link to the current page. If so, it prevents the default action and returns early, no need to transition to the same page. Otherwise, it uses our transition router to navigate to the new path. The important part is the on transition ready callback. This triggers our page transition animation when the new page is ready to show. Finally, let's update our JSX to use this navigation handler. I'll add an on-click event listener to each link component in our navigation. With these changes, clicking any navigation link will now trigger our custom page transition effect. But there is one issue, when the route changes, you can see the current page still disappears immediately, which isn't what we want. To fix this, we need to make some updates to our CSS to control the default behavior of the view transitions. Let's add the CSS rules now. First, I'm targeting both the old and new root elements. I'm setting their animation property to none and override the default animations. This gives us complete control over how the transition behaves. Next, for the view transition group, I'm setting Z index to auto. Again, overriding it. This ensures our transition elements stack correctly with other elements on the page. For the view transition image pair, I am setting isolation to isolate. This creates a new stacking context, so our animations don't interfere with each other. I am also adding will change clip path to optimize the performance for our clip path animations. And setting z index to 1 to position it above normal content. For the view transition new root, I am setting a high z index of 10,000. This ensures the new page content always appears on top during the transition. Again. I am setting animation to none to disable default animations. Finally, for view transition old root, I am setting the index to 1. This positions the old content below the new page during the transitions. And again, disabling the default animations. If you want a deeper explanation of these CSS rules, I covered them a bit more in detail in my previous Next.js page transition video. I'll drop the link in the description. With these CSS fixes in place, our page transition is now ready. Now just to keep this video focused and concise, I am not including the text animation aspects. Those animations have nothing to do with the page transition itself. 
However, if you are interested in learning how to create those text animations, check out my recent videos on GSAP split text animations. You can simply copy and paste that code with different delay values to recreate the effect. And that wraps up our tutorial. I hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.